Hi, my name is Shaji Kumar. I'm a hematologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. This past ash, I presented the results of the phase two trial called Ascent trial that looked at a fixed duration treatment with a combination of daratumumab, carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and uh, dexamethasone in patients with high-risk smoldering multiple myeloma. So as you all know, um, smoldering multiple myeloma is a intervening stage between monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance and active multiple myeloma. And over the years, we have um, again shown the natural history of smoldering multiple myeloma and how uh, nearly two thirds of these patients progress to get active myeloma over a 10 year period. We also know that there are patients with much higher risk, almost 50% risk of progression within the um, next five years after diagnosis. Um, and clinical trials, um, in fact, phase three clinical trials using lenalidomide or lenalidomide and dexamethasone have already shown that you can intervene early in these patients with high-risk smoldering multiple myeloma and actually delay the time to progression to active myeloma. This One of the studies also showed that patients live longer with early in intervention in patients with high-risk smoldering. Uh, and there are ongoing trials that are exploring whether a myeloma type treatment would be more appropriate rather than using just one drug for that early intervention in patients with uh, high risk smoldering. Now, the combination of uh, carfilzomib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone uh, has been shown to have quite significant activity. Um, in the newly diagnosed myeloma setting, the combination uh, of uh, daratumumab with carfilzomib. Uh, lenalidomide and dexamethasone has been explored with uh, high efficacy. Now, one of the concepts that we wanted to explore uh, through the ASCEN trial was to see if we can actually uh, cure um, uh, some of the patients with high-risk monitoring multiple myeloma. Clearly, um, that is an um, endpoint that will take quite a long time to uh, become evident, but we wanted to make sure we started doing small trials um, like this phase two trial in order to um, actually enroll the patient so that we can follow them long-term to see if high-intense therapy uh, like this four drug combination can eradicate those clonal plasma cells that we see in the small to multiple myeloma to the extent that they may never uh, grow back up again. So what we did in this study was to identify patients with high-risk small to multiple myeloma as defined by the International Myeloma Working Group uh, criteria um, either the uh, May or 20 to 20 criteria or the updated one using um, the uh, assigned scoring system. Um, as long as patients had no light chain amyloidosis and no adequate marrow organ uh, and had adequate marrow and organ function, the patients could go on the study. Uh, the treatment consisted of an induction phase of six cycles with uh, carfilzomib given um, either weekly or twice weekly. Uh, in combination with lenalidomide, standard dose of daratumumab or dexamethasone. And then six cycles of consolidation um, with similar dosing, but with daratumumab given every four weeks and lower dose of dexamethasone. And then 12 cycles or one year of maintenance that included just lenalidomide and daratumumab. The objective of the trial was to um, determine the overall confirmed stringent complete response rate. Um, again, as a surrogate measure of uh, how much we can eradicate um, the clonal plasma cells. Uh, this, there are several secondary objectives included toxicities to identify the time to progression uh, and also the MRD negativity rate. Uh, 87 patients were enrolled in this study between July 2018 and November 2021. The median follow-up was a little over two years. Um, almost half of the patients have completed all 24 planned cycles. Um, and there were 14 patients who, um, percentage of patients who went off study prior to completing 24 cycles, either because of any so adverse events, patient preference, um, or disease progression. When you look at the baseline demographics, the median age was about 64. Um, the rest of it is as anticipated from other newly diagnosed myeloma trials and small ring trials. Majority of the patients came into the study because of the 20 to 20 criteria. Uh, when you look at the overall response rate, the best overall response rate was about 97%. So nearly all patients responded and nearly all patients had a very good partial response or better, showing that this regimen was quite effective. In fact, when you look at the patients um, for MRD rate, um, 73 patients or 84 patients of the patients had um, bone marrow 
that was negative for minimal residual disease, um, of which uh, 53 patients were also in a complete response, which um, satisfied the definition of IMWG definition of MRD negativity. Now, given that um, many of these patients are still continuing on this treatment, we would anticipate this MRD negativity rate to continue to go up. The MRD negativity was achieved relatively quickly with a median time to MRD negativity of about six and a half months. Um, and um, with 53 per, uh, of the 87 patients having reached uh, MRD negativity at the end of injection therapy. Now, there were four patients who had progressed over um, the follow-up. Obviously, the median PFS has not been reached, and the three-year PFS rate was 90%. When you look at the adverse events seen in the study, um, any great side effects possibly related to therapy was seen in the majority of the patients. But when you look at the grade three or higher hematological toxicity, that was seen in 18%, and non-hematological toxicity was seen in nearly half of the patients. Now, um, the dose reductions were required for carfilzomib and lenalidomide, um, and also for dexamethasone in almost 12 to 14 patients. Uh, but with the dose modifications, the patients were able to tolerate the treatments well. Um, looking at the types of um, adverse events, you can see that hematological toxicity was the most common with neutropenia. Uh, we also saw uh, increased uh, risk of infections with um, about four patients um, with pneumonia. A hypertension as a complication of uh, carfilzomib was noted in about seven patients. Um, the rest of the um, types of adverse events were similar to what we would anticipate with a similar regimen in newly diagnosed myeloma. So no new unanticipated uh, adverse events were noted. So in conclusion, this four drug combination appears to be quite effective in patients with high-risk multi multiple myeloma. The toxicities we saw with the regimen was very similar to what we see in a newly diagnosed active myeloma with no new toxicity signal. Uh, the patients um, are continuing uh, on observation after completing the two years of treatment. It is very important to note that this was a uh, limited duration therapy so that we wanted to give them um, treatment-free interval uh, after having completed this treatment of, um, duration. Obviously, we need much, much longer follow-up in, um, in order to see if this MRD negativity can be sustained over a period of time. And again, these results have to be taken in the context of other similar trials like the, uh, the GEM-CSAR trial that looked at carfilzomib lendex with transplant in a similar patient population and came up with results that are quite similar as well. So hopefully with these multiple um, small phase two trials looking at intense therapies, um, over a long period of time, we'll get a better sense of whether we can cure at least a fraction of patients with high-risk monitoring myeloma. And I would like to acknowledge the Black Swan Research Initiative, the International Myeloma Foundation, study staff at all sites, patients will be to participate on this uh, study. Thank you.